아, 그래가지고 나 덮은 거 아니면 걸어둔 거 아니면 왜 걸어둔 거 아니면 그래가지고 이거 너가 다 보고 그냥 누구 물려줬는데 누구 안 가져갔나 아, 저 지금 저 수업 들어요 Let's restart the class. So, can somebody remind me what, what did we write down as the problem at the start? What was the problem or the issue? What did you write down for problem or issue? Kainas on the value of R and Yeah. Kainas on the value Should China keep their managed currency? Okay, anybody else? So we saw on the last page of the conclusion they had some questions here. If we see that it usually helps us to understand the issue, right? So we can answer those questions. Okay? So first of all we can see that uh, China has a different opinion than other people about its currency. So the first question is, was the RMB undervalued? So discuss with your partner. Okay, now we're doing the analysis, right? First question, do you think the Chinese currency was undervalued or not at that time? Looking at the data that we saw, the information in the case. The US made their argument, right? We wrote down that information. China made their argument. We saw on the graphs, they had some different data to back up their argument. Okay? So what do you think? Discuss with your partner. Was the Chinese currency undervalued or not? case study analysis, right? So you should have the problem, relevant information, and now we're doing, you should be writing in the analysis an action point for part, right? What do you think? Is the Chinese currency undervalued? Or at that time, was it undervalued or not? Yeah. 
Okay, so let's have a show of hands. Who thought that yes, the RMB was undervalued? Hands up, yes, it was undervalued. Okay, no, it wasn't undervalued. Hands up. Chinese students? Two <laughs> Chinese students? Only once. Right, so why do you think it wasn't undervalued? What's your argument? Do you agree? What do you think is the important argument that it wasn't undervalued? said it was uh, so call we move yeah. why do you think it is undervalued Reserves. If we look at China's reserves, they have current account surplus. Their exports are growing, right? Their reserves of US dollars is growing, always growing, right? So it means that they are intervening and buying US dollars, right? Any other reason? reasons the US government said? Chinese exports. Chinese exports. Exports growth is very high. 
or was very high at that time, right? So their US dollars reserves is growing, their exports are growing. Okay, anything else? There is a deficit. Uh, US has a deficit with China. So the US has a big trade deficit. So if we look at the PPP, we, they didn't talk about the PPP here, but we can. What is the official figure of? This is the OECD, right? China is a non-OECD member, but they still make the PPP an exchange rate for China. You said today's exchange rate is 6.3, 6 6 according to your OECD it should be $1, it's 3, 3.5, right, 2013, 2008 the same, right, 3.19, which is the stronger RMB, 3 or 6? One dollar is three RMB, or one dollar is six RMB. Which is a stronger RMB? Three. Three, right? One dollar is three RMB. So according to these economists, according to purchasing power parity, Chinese RMB would be undervalued, right? Where should I go on holidays? China or the US? China. Right? I'll get better value in China. <laughs> if I like getting good value, then if I go to McDonald's in China. Big Mac will just be two US dollars. Okay, if I go to the US, it's going to be four, twice as expensive, right? So, uh, you can also look at that kind of thing. So, if we decide that Chinese currency may be undervalued, right? Then the next question is, what are the consequences if China changes its currency regime. Okay, if China allows its currency to get stronger or changes to the floating regime, what is the consequence? What would happen? Okay, so discuss with your partner about this question. So if China, is, let's say China revalues tomorrow on 30%. Okay, China's currency gets 30% stronger, it goes from 6 down to 4, right? So tomorrow the exchange rate, China lets its exchange rate float, it float, and the exchange rate changes from 6 down to 4, okay? What's the consequences for China, for the rest of the world? So discuss with your partner. Do you understand consequences? I'm 
Less FDI, right? Land and labor is more expensive, so less FDI in China, right? Maybe more. They, their currency is worth more, so they can buy more, right? It's like you come to Korea and to study. If the Chinese RMB gets stronger, is that better for you or worse for you? Better, right? So same Chinese people can go on holidays or buy other companies in another country. Okay, so we can have Chinese land and labor is more expensive, right? But outward FDI can be increased. Okay? It's easier for companies like Lenovo to buy IBM. IBM is cheaper to Lenovo now. Okay? Any other effects? So we could have, in this case, exports are more expensive, reduced exports, less FD, inward FDI. So we have increased unemployment. Okay, we saw that China has an issue already with millions of farmers with no high school education that need to find a job. Okay. Any other consequences? It's growth of domestic. Okay. The China domestic market is growing up so because the China people want their money is double. So China buy more imports. Yes. If their currency is stronger, it this, all things in China get more expensive. My my salary goes up, but things in China also get more expensive. So we're talking about more international effects, right? I can afford the U.S. imports more easily. But it doesn't mean I can afford Chinese products more easily. Chinese products price went up, my salary went up, right? <clears throat> Anything else? What's going to be the effect for the other countries? Sorry, for China, we talked about the savings, right? Savings, their savings will go down. US dollar savings will be down, okay? What about the rest of the world? What effect would that have on the rest of the world? Do you buy many Chinese products? No. Do the products you buy have some part made in China? No. You think? <coughs> what about your jumper? Where was that made? This. Your jumper. What about your Nike trainers? Malaysia. Malaysia. Your sweater? Made in China. <laughs> so what's going to be the effect on the rest of the world? Chinese goods are more expensive. Product price will be increased. What's that called? When the price of things go up. What's the name for that? 
inflation, right? So the rest of the world can have a higher inflation. Okay, when we calculate inflation, we calculate the basket of goods, right? Shampoo, washing of liquid, sweaters, clothes, okay, plastic cups, plates, okay? So ROW is the rest of the world. We can have increased inflation, especially con countries which import from China, okay? Uh, the cost of the good. What about the MNCs, the foreign MNC? multinational companies from Japan or Korea or the US. Increased cost, right? Also can lead into inflation. Okay? Companies which are producing in China. <coughs> okay? So uh, we can see those kind of consequences. Do you think there's any positive consequence for the rest of the world? Do you think that, like Donald Trump might say, manufacturing jobs will come back to the US or no. not? No. Major some Asian countries can benefit from this, they can get more competitive. Okay, so Asian countries like who? Uh, like India. 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 <laughs> Malaysia. Malaysia. Vietnam. Vietnam. They can get some. Increase the FDI. Yes. Right? Increased exports. People who are competing with China in the same kind of product category get some advantage, right? Already we can see that China's currency is getting stronger. Companies are moving, to, Korean companies are moving to Vietnam or the Philippines, right? Or Thailand, okay? Uh, to get some cheaper land and cheaper cost of labor, right? But China is not too worried because China has a strategy wants to move up the value chain. Do you understand to move up the value chain? China says, that's okay, you can take the very low cost manufacturing job. I want to move up, start to make more value added products. Okay? So <coughs> we could say that China is forced to make more value added, added products also, right? Forced to move up value chain. Or so the companies here that are, they have a low profit margin business, maybe they're going to go out of business or they're going to have to change. They're pressurized to adapt. Okay, do you understand? They have to change. Instead of making plastic cups, they're going to make something else, right? Or maybe some very fancy plastic cup with better design. So we saw Japan moved up the value chain. In the 60s and 70s, Japan used to make a very low cost products, right? But gradually Japan changed to higher value chain products. Korea the same, right? Korea used to make lower, low cost, low profit margin products, but Korea also moved up the value chain, started to make more technological and IT based and know-how products, okay? Yes. In order to uh, compete, okay? Uh, so, then the, we have to decide on our action plan. Our action plan is going to be, are we going to keep the managed one? Are we going to go towards floating? If we go towards floating, should we do that immediately and suddenly? Or should we do it gradually and maybe after four or five years make a floating exchange rate? Okay? So discuss with your partner. What is the advan main advantages of the managed floating rate? What is the main disadvantage? Okay? Compare the managed floating against the floating regime and decide what are you going to do. If you're, what is the best idea for China? You're working for the Chinese Central Bank. Are you going to keep the managed float exchange rate or are you going to change to floating? So discuss with your partner. It's the action plan. Action plan means what are we going to do?
Okay, so let's have a show of hands then. Who thinks that China should keep the managed flow to exchange rate forever? Or at least for the moment? Yes, who thinks that China should change to the floating exchange rate? Okay, so not everybody put up your hand. You have two choices, right? China changed to the floating exchange rate. Doesn't have to be today, right? They can change over the next five years. Okay, let's talk about just within five years. China changed the floating exchange rate within five years, right? Or China keeps the managed exchange rate for more than five years, right? For a long time. So hands up, who thinks stay in the managed exchange rate? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Who thinks make floating rate? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's not all the students. That's only 14 students. There are more than 14 students here. So it's about equal, but I want to see which one you think. Right, so let's try again. Everybody has to vote. Managed flow, hands up. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Floating. Okay, so floating, we decided to do floating. Class, right? So, let's hear from both sides. So, you guys. Chinese students, you said managed flow. Why do you think managed flow? What's the main advantage? It's more safe. There you go. No risk of the crisis. Okay. Any other reason? Any other reason? 
Yes? Will be slow appreciation, so the economy will help time to restructure and this do the language issue. So we can still appreciate, but just slowly, right? It's managed, it's not pegged, right? <clears throat> so we can see it has been appreciating very slowly, 5% a year about, okay? Uh, from 8 to 6, 8 in 2004 to 6 now, okay? Maybe in another 10 years it could be 4, if we can follow the same trend, right? Any other point for managed floating? One more advantage for managed floating. Managed one. Okay. So protect your industry. Protect your exporters, right? Yes. Okay, then who's floating? What about floating? Three advantages of floating. Korean students mostly said floating. You can tell me some advantage for floating. Change your mind? Man's <laughs> floating? Yes? Okay, so we can respond to the crisis more freely. Chinese currency is going to get weaker or stronger? Yeah. Then is the reserves going to be worth more or worth less? Less. Less, less right? So that's going to be on this side. Another one on this side, right? Keep our savings. Okay? Can we have any on this side? We don't have to think just about China. What about other countries too? Are there any positive? You mentioned here. Economies can get some advantage. Maybe the US is hoping that the other emerging economies would also appreciate against the dollar, right? Or that Korea and other current countries would also appreciate against the dollar. Okay, but they might not. Right? If China appreciates. We saw in the history that probably Korea, Taiwan, and Japan would also follow a little bit, right? Also appreciate their currencies too. So then the U.S. thinks that's what the U.S. would hope, right? All the Asian currencies appreciate, follow China. So if they all, if other Asian countries follow China, the U.S. hopes they will improve their trade deficit. Right, we could balance the trade deficit a little bit. What we saw with Japan wasn't really the case, but it didn't really work. But the US makes this point, right? So if all of the Asian countries revalue together, it might be stronger than China. Okay? If China revalues, then the other Asian countries might feel, okay, now we can appreciate. Because beforehand, they might say, no, we can't appreciate because China's currency is quite weak, right? So, any other advantage for floating exchange rate? 
Okay, we can have, we said if we have the floating exchange rate, Chinese people can invest abroad, right? We can get rid of the capital controls. So we can get rid of the capital controls. We can have rear, the IMF usually suggests, get rid of the capital controls, right? So China would be more integrated in the financial markets. Do you understand integrated? Integrated in world financial markets. So people can invest in China more easily. Okay? Chinese people can invest in the other countries. Okay? So we have a list of different arguments. These days I think the Chinese government is exploring a little bit about maybe in a few years they might allow their current there taking away some capital controls quite slowly. Okay. Recently, the, the president of China visited uh, the UK. Did you know that? Did you see that on the TV? The president visited the UK. He went in the carriage with the Queen. Yes, did you see that on the news? They said he wanted to do that. He wanted to go with the Queen in the carriage and all the horses and men. And then and basically, whatever he wants, England is going to do, right? They want business from China. So they say, what? You want to go on a carriage with the Queen? Okay. We'll get all the horses, we'll get all the guys, and you can go down the street to Buckingham Palace with the Queen in the carriage. Right? So, uh, China is trying... The UK wants to get this kind of business, because they know that China is opening up their financial area, right? So they don't want them to go to New York, they want them to go to London, right? So they're being very nice to the Chinese these days, right? They want, and they already made some agreements with China, that China's going to make some exchange center in London, okay, for exchanging the RMB to other currencies. So London is trying to get there early, uh, to get that kind of business. China opens up more, okay? Uh, so do you have any other question or comment about this case? <coughs> so anyway, at least we can understand a little bit about uh, the Chinese economy and exchange rate and system. Okay, China is a big trade party partner with uh, Korea. Okay. Uh, so then let's uh, just briefly introduce the next topic that we're going to talk about. So please remember to give me the page in the next class. You can give it to me today or the next class with your ID number and your name. Okay. You don't have to have all the same answers here. If you said that you think Chinese currency is not undervalued, that's okay. You can write on the thing. Okay. Sometimes the answer is not black and white, so you can have your own opinion. Okay. So, <coughs> then, the next thing we're going to talk about is about uh, uh, government bonds, and what affects the price of the government bonds. So we're going to do a case study of Germany and Greece in the European area, because they use the same currency, right? So here we can see the government bonds, uh, United States, China, Japan, Germany, right? So here we can see this is trading economics, US government bond, 10 year, it's all the 10 year, right? And then we calculated the yield, the yield, right? How much interest we'll get, okay? So every country has different yield on their bonds or interest rate. We could also call this like interest rate. Okay? So uh, we can see in the US currently it's 2.25%. In China, 3.15%. In Japan, 0.31%. Germany, 0.48%. Okay? France used the same currency as Germany, 0.81%. Okay? So why do you think that, for example, China and Japan is so different? What's the main reason China and Japan is so different? Why do people, if they invest in Japanese bonds, they just get 31? Japan is the tail more than China. What do you mean? What's stable? No, inflation. 
inflation, right? Inflation is the main, is the big one, which affects the bonds, okay? If that country has a higher inflation, I expect the money will be worth less in the future, okay? We talked about the carry trade, where people made the bet the opposite way, right? But usually, Brazil, right? Brazil, I, I'm going to get 15% interest. Great, <laughs> right? Until I change my money back next year. What will happen when I change my money back next year? Because of inflation, what will have happened? The cross TV. Ten-year bond, right? Inflation has a strong relationship with the exchange rate. So the Brazilian currency would have got weaker by how much? Fifty percent. Around that much, right? Do you understand? Yes. Okay, but some people do the carry trade. They invest in Brazil anyway. And they gamble that Brazil's currency won't get weaker, right? They take a loan from Japan and they invest in Brazil. And they hope Brazilian currency gets stronger. But if inflation is high in Brazil, maybe in one year or two years, it could go against inflation. But over the long term, we're talking about a 10-year bond here, usually the exchange rate is going to follow inflation. Okay, so inflation is the big reason. Uh, for the bond price. But what about Germany and France? Germany and France, we're going, well, we're going to talk about Germany and Greece. So Germany is 0 0.48. Right? If we look at Spain, it's 1.69. Uh, if we look at Greece, it's 6.94. So Greece used the euro currency. Germany used the euro currency. Is there any inflation problem with the euro there? No, right? They're both using the same currency. I can't say this currency has high inflation and this currency has low inflation. So this one will get stronger and this one will get weaker. Okay? They're both using the same currency. So what we are going to try and understand is why. Why do you think Greece interest rate is 6.9%? Costs Greece much more money than Germany. Okay? Risk. Yes? Okay, so we're going to look at the example of during the euro crisis what happened between Germany and Greece and between the interest rates and why that kind of thing is happening. Okay, so then uh, let's finish there then for today. So I'll put the reading for the next class, it's not on the readings, so I'll put on the Geisha plan, the reading. Thank you.